So a few days ago, Black Pen Red Pen uploaded a video in which he solved this integral from the Berkeley Math Tournament uh, Integration B Finals. And uh, when I saw this integral, I immediately thought of a substitution that would make things a lot more simple. However, when I saw his video to check out whether my solution matched his, turns out he approached it head on and his solution is much cleaner than mine. But hey, um, since I thought of a solution and since it worked, why not just share it? So this is my take on this integral. So let the integral be called i and we have x times the square root of x to the natural log of x, the cube root times the cube root of x to the square of the natural log of x, etc, etc. And one substitution can make things look much simpler. If we let x equal e to the t, which implies that t equals the natural log of x. And this also implies that dx equals e to the t dt. Now, how does this transform the limits of integration? Well, for x to approach 0, we need t to approach negative infinity. And for x to approach 2, we need t to approach uh, the natural log of 2. So that means our integral transforms into the integral from negative infinity to the natural log of 2 of this x term becomes an e to the t times a big square root. And we have x to the natural log of x. Now x is e to the t and the natural log of x is t itself. So we have e to the t to the t. So this can be written, of course, as e to the t squared. And this is times a cube root of e to the t, that's this x term here. And the natural log of x is t, so this is t squared. So this can be written as e to the t cubed. Uh, this is being multiplied by the fourth root of e to the t to the, uh, e to the t to the power of four. And this will go on and on all the way up to the point where you reach the differential element dx, which transforms into e to the t times dt. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to just uh, break down or deconstruct these nested radicals. So let's write this um, giant square root as uh, the power of 1 by 2. So this e to the t is experiencing one exponent, right? So we can, e to the t squared, that is. So we can write it as e to the t squared by 2. And what about this giant cube root? We could write it as uh, something like this, correct? So this term here, this is experiencing a, uh, this is being raised to an exponent of one third, as well as an exponent of of one half. So we have e to the t cubed divided by two times three is six. Similarly, this e to the t, uh, uh, e to the t to the fourth power, uh, its exponent t to the four will be divided by six times four, which is 24. And we see a pattern emerging here quite nicely. And we're going to include this e to the t term as well while multiplying all of these exponential terms. Now, once you multiply the exponential terms, except for this one, I'm leaving this separately, we have the integral from negative infinity to the natural log of 2 of e to the t plus t squared by 2 plus t cubed by uh, 6, which is 3 factorial, plus uh, t to the 4 divided by 24, which is uh, 4 factorial, and so on. All of this is being multiplied by another e to the t, dt. Now, what exactly do we have up here in the exponent? Well, we know that the sum over the non-negative integers k of t to the k divided by k factorial equals e to the t. Now, this also includes the term corresponding to k equals 0, which is t to the 0 divided by 0 factorial, which is 1. And we're missing a 1 from here, so I could just add 1 and subtract 1. And that does no harm mathematically, of course. 
and does a lot of good to us in that we have now an e to the t term in place of this uh, infinite series. So we have the integral from negative infinity to the natural log of 2 of e to the e to the t minus 1 times e to the t dt. And this can be evaluated quite easily because we have e um, to some function of t times the derivative of that function of t. So we have uh, this integral evaluates to e to the e to the t minus 1. And the limits of integration are the natural log of 2 and negative infinity. Now, uh, using these limits, we have e to the e to the natural log of 2, which of course is 2 minus 1 minus in the limit as t approaches negative infinity, e to the t approaches 0. So we have e to the 0 minus 1, which sorts out to e minus 1 by e, which agrees with black pen, red pen's answer. So yeah, not as clean as his head-on approach, but still pretty elegant, I would say so. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.